Native American Stories Old Man and His Conscience Not so many miles away from the village, the great mountain range so devised to streams that are born there, that their waters offered as a tribute to the Atlantic, Pacific, and Arctic Oceans. In this wonderful range, the Indians believe the winds are made, and that there is a battle for supremacy over the Gunsight Pass. I have heard an old story too, that is said to have been generally believed by the Blackfeet, in which a monster bull elk that lives in the Gunsight Pass lures it over the winds. This elk creates the north wind by flapping one of his ears and the south wind by the same use of the other. I'm inclined to believe that the winds are made in that pass myself, for there are southern arrests in that pass, especially at this time of year. Tonight, the wind was blowing from the north, and filmy white clouds were driven across the face of the nearly full moon, monetarily veiling her light. Launch poles creaked and strained at every heavy gust and sparks from the flyers inside the lounges sped down the wind to fade and die. In his lounge, War Eagle waited for us, and when we entered, he greeted us warmly, but failed to mention the gale. I have been waiting, he said. You are late and the story I should tell you is no longer than many of the others. Without further delay, the storytelling commits. Once, old man came upon a lodge in the forest. It was a fine one and painted with strange signs. Smoke was curling up from the top and thus he knew that the person who lived there was at home. Without calling or speaking, he entered the lodge and saw a man sitting by the fire smoking his pipe. The man didn't speak, nor did he offer his pipe to the old man, as our people do when they are glad to see visitors. He didn't even look at his guest. But old man has no good manners at all. He couldn't see that he wasn't wanted. As he looked about the man's lodge and made himself at home. The linings were beautiful and were painted with fine skill. The lodge was clean and the fire was bright, but there was no woman about. Leaning against a fire, backrest, old man filled his pipe and lit it with a coal from the man's fire. Then he began to smoke and look around. Wondering why the man acted so queerly, he saw a star that shone down through the smoke hole and the tops of several trees that were near the lodge. Then he saw a woman way up a treetop and right over the lodge. She looked young and beautiful and tall. Whose woman is that up there in the treetop? asked old man. She's your woman if you can catch her and will marry her, growled the man. But you will have to live here and help me make a living. I'll try to catch her, 
If I do, I will marry her and stay here, for I am a great hunter and can easily kill what meat we want, said old man. He went out of the lodge and climbed the tree after the woman. She screamed, but he caught her and held her, although she scratched him badly. He carried her into the lodge and there renewed his promise to stay there always. The man married them and they were happy for four days, but on the fifth morning old man was gone, gone with all the dried meat in the lodge. The thief. When they were sure that the rascal had ran away, the woman began to cry, but not so the man. He got his bow and arrow and left the lodge in anger. There was snow on the ground and the man took the track of old man, intending to catch him and kill him. The track was fresh and the man started on the run for he was a good hunter and as fast as a deer. Of course, he gained on old man. He was a much slower traveler and the sun was not very high when the old thief stopped on the hilltop to look back. He saw the man coming fast. fast. This would never do, he said to himself. That queer person will catch me. I know what I should do. I should turn myself into a dead bull oak and lie down. Then he will pass me and I will go where I please. He took off his moccasins and said to them, Moccasins, go on towards the west. Keep going and make plain tracks in the snow towards the big water where the sun sleeps. The queer one will follow you, and when you pass out of the snowy country, you can lose him. Go quickly, for he is close upon us. The, mos the moccasins ran away, as old man wanted them to, and they made plain tracks in the snow, leading the way towards the big water. Old man turned into a dead bull elk and stretched himself near the tracks the moccasins had made. Up the hill came the man, his breath short from running. He saw the dead elk and thought it may be old man playing a trick. He was about to shoot an arrow into the dead elk to make sure. But just as he was about to let go of an arrow, he saw the tracks the moccasins had made. Of course, he thought the moccasins were on old man's feet and that the carcass was really that of a dead elk. He was badly fooled and took the tracks again. On and on he went following the moccasins over the hills and rivers. Faster than before went the man, and still faster traveled the empty moccasins, the trail growing dimmer and dimmer as the daylight faded. All day long and all the night the man followed the tracks without rest or food. And just at daybreak, he came to the shore of the big water. There, right by the water's edge, stood the empty moccasins side by side. The man turned and looked back. His eyes were red and his legs were trembling. Cow, 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 he heard a crow say. Right overhead he saw the blackbird 
and knew him too. How, old man, you were in that dead bull elk. You fooled me, and now you are a crow. You think you will escape me, do you? Well, you will not, for I too know magic, and I am very wise. With a stick, the man drew a circle in the sand. Then he stood within the ring, and sang a song. Old man was worried, and watched strange doings from the air overhead. Inside the circle, the man began to whirl about so rapidly that he faded from sight. And from the center of the circle, there came an eagle. Straight at the crow flew the eagle, and away towards the mountains sped the crow in. The crow knew that the eagle would catch him, so that as soon as he can reach the trees on the mountains, he turned himself into a warren, and sought the small bushes under the tall trees. The eagle saw the change, and at once. Began turning over and over in the air. When he had reached the ground, instead of an eagle, a sparrow hawk chased the warren. Now the chase was fast indeed, for no place could the warren find in which to hide from a sparrow hawk. Through the bush, into the trees, among the weeds and grass, flew the warren and the sparrow. Through the bush, into the trees, among the weeds and the grass, flew the warren with the hawk close behind. Once the sparrow hawk picked a feather from the warren's tail. So close was he, to be his victim. It was nearly over. It was nearly over with the warren, when suddenly he came to a park along a riverside. In this park. Were a hundred lodges of our people, and before a fine lodge, there sat the daughter of the chief. It was growing dark and chilly, but still she sat there looking at the river. The sparrow hawk was streaking at the warren with his beak and his talons, when the warren saw the young woman, and flew straight to her. So swift he flew. That the young woman didn't see him at all, but she felt something strike her hand, and when she looked away, she saw a bone ring on her finger. This frightened her, and she ran inside the lodge, where the fire kept the shadows from coming. Old man had changed into a ring. Of course, the sparrow hawk didn't dare go into the lodge, so he stopped outside. And listened. This is what he heard the old man say. Don't be frightened, young woman. I am neither a warren nor a ring. I am old man, and that sparrow hawk has chased me all day for nothing. I have never done him harm, and he bothers me without reason. Liar, fork tongue! Cried the sparrow hawk. Believe him not, young woman. He has done wrong. He is wicked, and I am not a sparrow hawk, but conscious. Like an arrow, I travel straight and fast. When he lies or steals from his friends, I follow him. I talk all the time, and he hears me, but he lies to himself, and says he does not hear me. You know who I am, young woman. I am what talks inside a person. Old man heard what the sparrow hawk said, and he was ashamed. For once in his life, he crawled out of the lodge. Into the shadows, he ran away, away into the night, away into the darkness, away from himself. You see," said War Eagle, as he reached for his pipe. 
old man knew that he had done wrong, and his heart troubled him, just as yours will bother you if you do not listen to the voice that speaks inside yourself. Whenever that voice says a thing is wicked, it is wicked, no matter who says it is not. Yet yeah, not. Yes, it is very hard for a man to hide from himself. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you.